She makes me sweat with every bite when I sit at his table at night. The heat expands and contracts. It accelerates my blood. It flows like lava inside me, pushing to the surface. Then, like a heat storm, lightning crackles and the rain begins to gush all from my head and a body in a rush of fluids. Down it flows, molten rivers of ammonia and urea. Come on, you don't stop now. You go in for another and another. Then riding like a boat adrift on the equator, you feel that thing in your stomach. It sinks down and back, filling your whole body with warmth, rising up like a thermometer, a red vein in the middle of a nice, fat piece of glass. It's getting too big, bigger than you, bigger than you can keep inside, so you up, open up, and take a gas that turns into a long, dripping moan. Your guys are ready to blow. You give into the rising fire and scream out as you explode. Oh, over. And even as you climax on this potent, Red fruit and keep going, taking more and more until you suddenly stop feeling the heat finally subside. You push your plate away and take a deep breath before you look up at the chef's eyes. Mm, good sweaty peppers. What's for dessert? <laughs> Awesome fucking rad week, and um, it started off about a week ago. Uh, the Black Widow was building a wall of heavy ass stone and threw a little work party, and I was fortunate enough to be there to put my own sweat into a wall that will probably stand for a few hundred years. So I wrote this. It's called Retainer. Every stone has seven faces. Every stone can sit in seven places. I hear these words like a sing-song pushing me along from one slab to the next. I pull one from the pile, examine it, feel its grooves. Suddenly I feel this is the one. I use my core but lift from the knees this hefty hunk of hardened earth whispering to me. Secrets of the earth. It tells me where it wants to rest for the next hundred years or so. I approach the rising wall, one foot tall when I arrive, now closes on three. I see that spot the rock yearns for. Making my approach, I feel the earth and rubble in my hand flirt with the depression in the wall there. There, where I had laid those last three stones, my bones now starting to ache, my muscles quiver and quake, but there it is the final piece of the puzzle. I nuzzle her up in there and BAM! It doesn't quite fit. <laughs> <laughs> but stone masonry sing song arrives back where it belongs and my heavy oar rotates back and forth, my hand cradling the earth's crust gently but with great control, flexing everything to maintain this heft. Then she slips in with a gratifying thud. It resonates through me into the pools of sweat that drip upon my body, every inch of my clothing wet. I feel like a spell was cast, and this piece is the last one I shall lay. Later I return. My head was caked with dust and salt from day's work. I spent, I spy one dent on the man-made embankment. Reluctantly I glance at the stone pile and see its perfect mate. I give in and place the stone where it will lay for years. Tetris for half an eternity. Again, the sweat pours. I find a smaller stone at my feet. I pick it up.
thing called cabin fever. Hurtling through space at a speed that really is not that significant. My space is an inner atmosphere, not outer. I feel rattled and shook, thrust and through the world. Still, I feel like a diamond in the sky. My stomach hurts from the booze and sugar I've been drinking to get me through this. <sighs> hey, flying. However, I can't help but look out the window, down to the world and smile. It further turns my stomach, but it makes me feel like I am God. Like I am a part of a dog race that has mastered flight, which I am. <sighs> However, I know how fragile my mortal coil is. I know that should this silver bird hurtle from the sky for any reason, my soft, watery state would likely not be alive afterward. I do it, though. Out of need, based on statistics, telling me how safe it is. Walking to get here, I pass a sign of the light memorial emanating from where the Twin Towers used to be. The caption read, Never Forget. This is not a pleasant sign in an airport. <laughs> there is nothing like a reminder of the time four airplanes crashed as you wait online to pass through TSA shoeless, praying that you do not leave an item in your carry-on bag that has more than 12 ounce capacity. <laughs> However, here I am now, miles above the earth, slicing through space, turbulence not expected, <laughs> still no ease. So, to, still no ease to silence my mind, four tequilas and half a medicinal cough drop, yet my mind still stirs so strongly, so coherently in fear that I must type this out. I must vent this anxiety. I am a small, mortal meat suit hurtling through the air in a metal capsule relying on thermodynamics, statistics, <laughs> and faith. <laughs> Still I do it. Why? I get home faster. I get to be with the ones I love. I do it to get my vacation faster. Some do it because their job expects them to. Some even love it so much they become pilots. <laughs> Me? Well, let's just say four tequilas and some medicinal cough drops barely do the trick. <laughs> Landing now, this note has saved my life. The pulsing rise and fall of a fatal crash fears during landing eke out in my periphery, but things have been so good. So far I am more relaxed than I have been on other glides through the clouds. Next time, a little more tequila. <laughs> Woo! Woo! Woo!